This warrior SOB is called Chin Get, but it's significantly changed up from what the clipboard of last year's playbook shows in the bottom left of your monitor, making it an impossible action for Utah to scope out. After the young glove Gary Payton II, who's the one, inbounds it to Kavon Looney, who's acting as the four, Lester Quinones, who's acting as the five, and is on the weak side wing as opposed to in the paint, is going to set what's changed up from a UCLA screen on the four to a flare screen for the now involved in the reconstructed play 3 and Clay Thompson, all while Stephen Curry, who's acting as the 2, sets a screen for the 1 directly off the inbound. Another reconstructed part of this action is that the screen from the 2, which is set for the 1, is now directed towards the paint, as opposed to the perimeter in the previous iteration. Multiple off-ball screens at once keep the defense off balance, while Lester's screen gets two defenders onto Clay, leaving Quinones open for a deep-range bomb that he knocks down. What you just saw is an extremely improved action compared to what the clipboard displayed, which to be clear is how that same inbound play was run last season. Generally speaking, while Stephen Curry's recently referred to this Warrior team as quote-unquote average, with their playbook and playoff experience, let's look at the exact reasons for why I believe this seven-time championship winning franchise presents a mysterious threat that not too many higher seeds would want to endure in the playoffs. Also, the shocking stat that says a ton about the Warriors' potential this year is coming up, so keep it here. But quickly, if you like watching great basketball, want to see more highlights, and enjoy analysis on everything about hoops, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications because you're not going to want to miss a single video. Imagine writing off an organization like the Warriors, but more specifically, imagine writing off a killer like Curry, who among players with at least three championship rings, only trails two of basketball's all-time greats in Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal for the highest point per game average in a finals matchup ever. Inside the NBA's Charles Barkley would write off the dubs all the way back in October. In fact, Less than a game into the 23-24 season, he wrote off Golden State at halftime of the Warriors vs. Suns opening night matchup. Chuck has gone on to repeat time and time again that the Warriors are cooked on the nationally televised TNT network all season. By writing off the Warriors, Chuck is making a dangerous take. Counting out Stephen Curry at any point in the season, whether the first game of the year or not, is something that I know firsthand can really come back to bite you. In 2022, I picked the Celtics to win the title after their second round series win. Steph had other plans and ran through Boston in six games, which included the most overwhelming scoring run in a finals game of all time, outscoring the 18-time champions 21 to nothing during the second quarter of game six. Draymond's already clapped back once to Barkley's cooked comments, but if Steph and Draymond genuinely stop for one second and allow themselves to truly use Chuck's pure hating as motivation, we've seen how these two have carried championship teams in years past with significant fuel in the engine. We all saw how Steph flashed the zero sign above his eye, mocking ESPN's Kendrick Perkins, who said he'd win zero rings in the future when Perk was the dub's number one hater. If Steph can use Barkley's comments in a similar fashion, we're in for something special. Chuck's most famous take from back in the day was how jump shooting teams could never win the title. Look how that one turned out. How he's written off this revolutionary jump shooting team that won the title a couple years ago, all throughout 2023-24's campaign, will go down as his second worst take in history, behind when he wrote off the category of three-point shooting entirely before it took over the entire basketball world. In terms of this season for the dubs, in addition to the talking head from TNT, many aren't buying into the Warriors having too much upside quite yet, but you heard it here on D-Flow Hoops, the Warriors are about to continue their tear in the second half of the season and present themselves as a real threat for any first round matchup put in front of them. Golden State has the fifth easiest schedule remaining out of any team, the second easiest in the Western Conference, consisting of a hefty three games against the San Antonio Spurs, two games against the Charlotte Hornets, including games against the Washington Wizards, Memphis Grizzlies, Portland Trailblazers, as well as my hometown bottom-feeding Toronto Raptors. On top of what's in front of them seeming like a winnable stretch of outings, albeit if they stay healthy, it's in addition to that, the fact that the Warriors would be a top seed this year if they merely took care of business by closing out games, which makes them better than their modest 27-26 record. 
The Warriors have not only lost six games after being up by at least 15 points this season, as mentioned in my last upload, but have also blown the most fourth quarter leads this season outside of the Detroit Pistons. I know the Warriors are closing out games like a subpar team, but that stat also shows you what could have been if they were more locked in down the stretch. The killer instinct for this team obviously needs to be more of a factor times a thousand, but you can't sleep on the fact that if Golden State closes out even half of those 14 games where they were winning with 12 minutes or less on the clock, they would be up as the number 5 seed in the West, and if they closed out each and every one of those games, it's a team that would have been sitting atop the Western Conference. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. But if the in-a-contract year Steve Kerr can finally find the string of substitutions with the correct timing, that's the key to the Warriors hanging on to leads and maintaining mental fortitude with an advantage, in my opinion. What makes Golden State mysterious is the fact that whether or not they can stop blowing leads is unpredictable, while at the same time the fact that if they do figure out how to play with a killer instinct, we're looking at a title contender. This Warrior team entered the All-Star break on an absolute tear winning 8 of their last 10 games. If they can find a way to build off this momentum by picking up where they left off and defeating the team who eliminated them in last spring's second round, be in the Purple and Gold Lake Show, in what's their first matchup post-All-Star, this would allow Golden State to climb just half a game back of Los Angeles for the number 9 seed in the Western Conference. And being a play-in team is never where you want to be, but Take the 2023 Eastern Conference champion Miami Heat as an example of how far a team can go in this position. With their schedule and here's hoping reinvigorated coaching, look for Golden State to potentially move out of the play-in and into the 5 or 6 seed. That would obviously be more ideal for them than the play-in. It'll of course just take a bigger commitment to doing everything in your power to win every single game put in front of you at all costs. In addition to Clay's potentially permanent move to the bench that could very well significantly vamp his production, I've got big expectations that a couple Warrior rotation pieces will come out of their proverbial shell in the final quarter plus of the NBA season. Lester Quinones, his ability to bring quality vibes on the bench, Damian Lee style when he isn't getting minutes, and between the lines setting screens and making the extra pass, makes LQ a momentum shifter when Steve Kerr activates him. You can't forget about the wily veteran Andrew Doc Hudson Wiggins, who's been intriguingly throwing back the hands of time to the year 2022 when he was Steph's right-hand man on the path to a championship in his heyday. In the five games leading up to All-Star Weekend, Andrew was chipping in 14 points in 28 minutes per game, solid supporting cast member value that was racked up on 49.1% shooting from the field, exactly 50% shooting from three-point range, and he attempted four three-pointers per game over that stretch, so a decent deep-range volume. Andrew was also second on the dubs in steals and third on the dubs in rebounding per game over that span. Just like their chances in 2024, as signified at the very start of this video, an equally unpredictable playbook is another factor making the dubs a mysterious threat in my opinion. This play is called Delay Clear, where the 5 in Kavon Looney is tasked with passing from near the top of the arc. Looney has a choice to find either Splash Brother, who are being screened for as the 2 and 3 on each wing respectively. Since Gary Payton II's tough pin down is going to beast Thompson's matchup out of the way, Looney chooses to pass to Clay, who's freed up by Gary's big body screen for the catch and shoot. If you're liking the type of play breakdowns spliced in here and there throughout my videos, be sure to let me know if I should include more of that in my future uploads by subscribing and dropping a thumbs up. I want to know in your opinion, and for today's comment or shoutout question, where are the dubs finishing in the wild wild western conference? Pause to read today's comment or shoutout winners on your screen, your boy DFlow signing off, and peace.